Imagery is a foundational component of ArcGIS and it provides a comprehensive system for imagery management, map production, visualization and exploration and content. And I would like to talk about some different patterns for managing and disseminating imagery. And this is important because we are seeing a true data explosion of imagery and raster data around the world and also in New Zealand. Many new satellites are being launched into space that capture images using more bands, have a higher resolution and capture at a smaller time interval. And as we speak, a lot of new LiDAR data is being captured in New Zealand that needs to be managed and put to use. And also drones are being used across many sectors to capture frequent and high resolution imagery often using more than just the RGB bands. And this all comes with the challenge on how to manage and disseminate all this data. It also comes with many new opportunities to turn raw data into new information to better understand the world we live in. For example, to identify precious habitats or creating a 3D digital twin of our environment and to better manage pastures with so-called precision agriculture. How you manage all this data depends on many factors, like the size of the data, how often it gets updated, and how you want to use it. And I would like to mention a couple of different patterns here that can be used for managing and disseminating your imagery data. And an easy way to publish your data is by creating a raster tile cache uh, and publish it to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And this is a good option for creating base map type products like aerial base maps, analysis results, and elevation layers. And using ArcGIS Pro, you can easily share the data to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, where you can choose to have the cache created on the server or use your local machine for that. When you need more capabilities on your layer, you can create an image surface. And one of the benefits of an image surface is that it gives access to the pixel values of the available bands, so they can be used for analysis in, for example, raster functions and image analysis tools. And new since ArcGIS Enterprise 10.7 is the possibility to publish hosted, uh, hosted image layers directly from ArcGIS Enterprise Portal. And the data can be stored locally or in the cloud and accessed through a data store connection. Through an easy to follow guided workflow, you can create your image layer. This layer can then be used in analysis workflows. And this is a great way to quickly publish imagery. However, you don't have full control over the underlying mosaic dataset and the image surface properties. So the last, last pattern I would like to discuss does give you full control over the mosaic datasets and the image surface. And it's a more traditional approach of pu publishing image surfaces to ArcGIS Enterprise. Managing your, data, uh, your imagery is done in ArcGIS Pro using Mosaic datasets. The data can be stored locally or on shared drives, but as datasets are getting bigger, we see cloud storage to be a more common storage location for imagery. And ArcGIS allows you to connect to the cloud storage in both ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Pro. And when using cloud storage, performance can benefit greatly by converting the imagery into a cloud-optimized format, like MRF. A great tool to convert and upload your data to the cloud is the Optimized Registers Toolbox by Esri. And the imagery, whether in the cloud or st stored locally, can then be added to a mosaic dataset and published as an image service to ArcGIS Enterprise. And please have a look at the extensive imagery workflows documentation and tools that Esri has made available. You also find scripts there that can help automating the process. Now let's shift the focus to some of the new capabilities of imagery in ArcGIS. Analysis is a major part of the work of a GIS image analyst. And there's an extensive set of analysis tools available for both Image Server and in ArcGIS Pro with Image Analyst. And some of the new tools in Image Server are classify objects using deep learning and convert rasters to features. Also, the multidimensional analysis tool set has been added to Image Server. And this allows you to create trend rasters from time series uh, raster data and predict using the trend rasters. And all these image server tools are available through ArcGIS Pro and the Map Viewer. And change detection is a major requirement for many raster GIS users. In ArcGIS Pro 2.7, a new change detection wizard has been added to guide you through the workflow of change detection. In a few steps, you can do change detection onto categorical or continuous rasters, 
or on a set of time series registers. An exciting new option for working with imagery is available with the April release of RTS Online. With the image user type extension, you can host, manage, visualize and analyze imagery collections in the cloud. In this release, you can upload your imagery and raster data to RTS Online and publish it as a tiled imagery layer. And these layers are tiled, but store the pixel values and band information. And this allows for fast visualization, while they can still be used for analysis. And for analysis, you have access to a large set of raster function and raster analysis tools, straight from the map viewer. And in a future release, dynamic imagery will be added as a capability that provides mosaicing and immediate processing. And this was a quick overview of some of the capabilities of, uh, of imagery in RGS and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. And drones are a key part of RGS and a major source of imagery. And to hear, hear more about drones and how it fits in the RGS system, let's switch to James Wright. Drones have become a key part of the ArcGIS system, supporting many different workflows. What I want to do is summarize some of the specific products that enable these workflows, highlighting the key updates since we last spoke. As a brief reminder, ArcGIS Drone Collections is a simple cloud, is a complete cloud-based end-to-end system for ca capturing, managing, and analyzing drone imagery. It begins with the SiteScan Flight Planner, the application for iPad that allows state-of-the-art flight planning and, contro and control of the drones. Then continues with the desktop-based drones map or SiteScan Manager web application for managing and processing the drone imagery to create dry derived products and perform a variety of analysis, generate reports, and finally, those data products can then be shared to either ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. ArcGIS Drone Collections acts as a streamlined solution for fast and accurate map production that can then feed into the imagery capabilities throughout the rest of the platform. I'd like to show you a few of the key updates I think you might like to both the flight planner and the wider drone capabilities on offer. The first of the updates to the flight planner is the terrain follow capability. This option is available in all of the automatic flight modes and uses Esri's World Elevation Service to create a 3D flight path for your drone. This will ensure a constant elevation for your flight. Beyond the obvious safety benefits for your drone, this, there are two main other benefits to using terrain follow. I will use this example of a property that has had the challenge of being highly vegetated and located on a hillside. By enabling terrain follow and switching to the 3D view, you can see how the drone's flight path has been automatically adjusted to follow the hill. The profile view provides further indication of this by displaying the drone's height above the takeoff point, terrain along the planned route of flight, and the planned return height shown in yellow. This ensures that the imagery captured and in turn the process outputs will have a constant ground sampling distance, also known as resolution. Secondly, it will ensure proper overlap and inside lap between the images so that as the drone rises and falls, which as many of you know is essential to producing high quality outputs through photogrammetry. SightScan now produces geospatially referenced videos and works alongside ArcGIS Pro anytime you record a video, either using an automatic flight such as an area scan or when flying manually. It provides a geospatial video log recorded as a CSV file. Simply export these logs and bring them into ArcGIS Pro. Once the metadata is attached, the video player will automatically appear and start displaying the georeferenced video footprint on the map. Because these videos are geospatially referenced, you can, simply, you can use simple tools to make measurements of the video itself, such as this measure distance. I can also mark locations on the video and project them onto my map. This can then be saved as a feature class and served to other users in, in my team throughout different applications. Finally, I've realized that my base map is out of date and want to share some observed damage with a field worker. I can simply save the video frame and add it to my map, ready to share up-to-date imagery with my field worker. SightScan now makes it easy to get useful information out of full motion video. I look forward to seeing how you all use this functionality. Next up is integration with the popular field app Quick Capture. The integration between ArcGIS Quick Capture and SightScan for ArcGIS is pretty simple. The SightScan app provides a position source to Quick Capture, meaning that instead of the, using your GPS on your phone, Quick Capture now uses the location of the drone. 
While the drone oper operator flies the drone, you can use Quick Capture to record the locations of anything of interest as either points, lines, or polygons. Then you can instantly transmit that information to other teams in the field via, Arc via ArcGIS Online or Enterprise. The benefit of such workflows is that information coming from the drone can be pushed straight into ArcGIS without waiting for the drone to land. Web maps and dashboards can therefore be fed with near real-time spatial information. Back to our hilly farm in the Port Hills, our drone pilot can now use Quick Capture to quickly record beaches using that integration. Here they want to mark the boundary of a forest using a simple line feature. Next, by using the drone's camera and video feed as an eye in the sky, our drone pilot has noticed that one of the trees is diseased and wants to record the location with a point feature. Since these features are recorded as feature layers, updates are sent directly back to the office ready for our team to address any issues. There are a few major enhancements coming to SiteScan over the coming year. First is updates to the manager, including the second version of fleet management, allowing for greater data capture of drone hardware, flight logs, as well as drone maintenance and pilot licensing. Also the addition of Shore for ArcGIS as the 3D mesh engine for processing. This will allow for, three of, for 3D meshes of far greater quality and accuracy. More to come on this over the next few months. In the, in the flight planner, there will be added, the added ability to perform post-flight checklists for your organization's specific needs. Finally, the app continues to be aligned with ArcGIS. This includes moving to ArcGIS logins, as well as easier integration with the rest of the apps. So why not try out some of this new functionality today with the SightScan LE Flight Planner, available right now to anyone with an ArcGIS login. Thanks.